Good morning. Welcome back to another episode of The Trainer. I'm Brandon Steckler, technical editor of Motor Age Magazine. And today's episode is about command versus response. When I'm talking about response, I mean the work that's actually being performed in the circuit. Those of you that have children, just think about this. How many times have you asked your child to clean their room? That was the command being issued but check back an hour later and it's still just as messy as it was before you mentioned it. The command wasn't carried out. What am I getting at is so many technicians are concerned about the voltage available at a specific test point on a circuit. Now, although that's a very important aspect to measure and discuss, what we have to consider is the voltage is a command that was being issued to allow a circuit to function. But it doesn't mean that the circuit carried out that function. Stick with me through this episode of The Trainer and find out how measuring the work being performed is gonna take your diagnostics to the next level. So during today's demonstration, I'm going to be featuring the eScope Elite 4 by Automotive Test Solutions which is a four trace lab scope, PC based lab scope, and an amperage probe. And the probe is going to be used to demonstrate the work being performed in the circuit. So I'm utilizing all data service repair information and not that your information repair system you choose to use is important so long as it contains the correct information. And what we see here is our AC compressor clutch system in the related circuitry. The system is provided voltage, the AC compressor clutch is provided voltage and current flow from a relay located in the underhood fuse block. So the switch side of the relay connects to the AC compressor clutch and the control side of the relay is in line with the powertrain control module. So we can see here that voltage is supplied from the ignition switch in either the run or start position through a 10 amp fuse to the AC compressor clutch relay coil and that coil is controlled on the ground side through the PCM. Now again the complaint is that the compressor clutch doesn't always function. So what I'm going to do in lieu of running the engine and allowing the powertrain control module to drive the AC compressor clutch relay, I'm going to be back probing this circuit and supplying a fused path to ground to take the place of the PCM. So we got to consider the limitations of the test we're performing here, first of all, doing that. If I do that, I am eliminating the PCM. So for instance, if the PCM indeed was the issue, I'd be bypassing the PCM and I would not see the fault. So keeping that in mind, um, I'm going to implement that control with my fused ground wire, keeping all that in mind. So when I provide that ground path, just like if the PCM provided the ground path, current should flow through the relay coil, creating a magnetic field. And that magnetic field should create physical shuttling, allowing this switch to close, which would provide the current flow necessary for the AC compressor clutch coil to function as such. Now, I am going to be utilizing a special tool which I'll describe here in a moment to allow us access to the terminals. So before we go back to the to the wiring diagram, I figured it's necessary that I demonstrate these special tools I was talking about. This is a special relay test tool. So as you can see, it's configured just like a four pin relay. And this end of this device is going to replace the relay. So I'm going to remove the relay from the fuse block and I'm going to drop this device in its place. Now if I flip this device this way, you will see there's holes to accommodate a relay. That same relay I just removed, I will now put in here. I will push it right in here. This replaces the fuse block surface itself. So with this in the fuse box and the relay on top, there are four terminals that protrude. One pair of terminals for circuit 85 and 86. We'll describe that when we go back to the wiring diagram. And another set of terminals for 
relay terminals 30 and 87. Again, we'll describe that when we go back to the wiring diagram. Now I'm going to set this down. And I'm going to pick up another special tool. Uh, this is simply a loop of wire. But as you can see, what makes it special is the terminals on the end represent that of a fuse. So just like we removed the relay and supplemented that relay with a special tool, we're going to remove the fuse from the fuse box. We're going to drop this in place of the fuse. But rather than eliminating the fuse, we're going to place the fuse right here. So current would flow through from the fuse box through this loop of wire across the fuse that goes here and right back through the other end. So the circuit is going to continue to function as designed. However, what this is going to do for us is provide an opportunity for us to connect our amp probe to it so we can measure the work being performed in the circuit easily. Now, let's go back to the wiring diagram. Now that we have an idea of what these are and what they do, I'm going to show you where I'm going to place them so we can perform our testing. So back to our wiring diagram, that what we are familiar with the special tools. I'm going to discuss where we are going to be placing our test leads of our lab scope because we want to see the story being told. We want to see the command being issued, meaning the voltage to the compressor clutch coil. And we want to see the work being performed, meaning the amperage. So I'm first going to take my yellow meter lead, channel one of my lab scope, and I'm going to be placing it right where you see that dot. That's going to be voltage to the relay coming from the fuse. I am then going to take my second voltage channel, the red one, channel two, and I'm going to be placing it right there on the output side of the switched side of the relay. So yellow is available voltage from the battery, and red is voltage leaving the relay once the relay energizes. And finally, I'm going to be adding my amp probe here, and the amp probe is going to allow us to see current flowing through the entire circuit over here feeding the AC compressor clutch. Now, again, considering the limitations of the test we're performing, what happens if we have an issue on the control side? Meaning maybe my path to ground wasn't good enough, or we have an issue with the relay itself. Maybe the coil itself is bad and can't produce a magnetic field. These are things we have to consider. So as long as this relay functions and we show voltage here, let me, let me back up and say, if we show voltage here at the red lead, we know we must have voltage available at the yellow lead, and we also know the relay must have closed. So we are kind of splitting the circuit in half, and we are staying on this half of the circuit. If this half of the circuit is not functioning electrically, of course, we have to consider the, the control side of the relay. So let's make our way out to the vehicle and implement this test and analyze the results. So as discussed... Sitting down at my computer, we developed a game plan on how to analyze this circuit. Now, I'm going to be bugging this circuit as we discussed. I'm going to allow an AC compressor clutch to function normally. And then I'm going to create a situation that makes the circuit not function as designed. I should say the system not function as designed. And we're going to use the data, the combination of the command being issued, if it was indeed issued, the relay closing and the operation or the work being carried out through that compressor clutch control circuit. We're going to take our amp probe and we're going to connect it around this loop of wire to measure the work being performed. And we are also going to connect our voltage leads from our scope. It's time to set up the scope now. So channel one is going to be sampling voltage Coming from the ignition switch to the relay control coil, we'll set that up at plus or minus 20 volts. Channel 2 is going to be measuring voltage leaving the relay, heading down to the AC compressor clutch. We'll set that up for plus or minus 20 volts. And channel 3 is going to be the amperage probe measuring the work being performed. That is set up on a 20 amp scale. So we will go to our measure and deep record screen. I will start my capture. As you can see, at the top of the screen, is our 12 volt signal. We're going to analyze this on the computer, but I just want to show you that there's ignition voltage available. There is no current flow taking place down here, and there is no voltage on the, on the switched side of the relay facing the AC compressor clutch coil. So I'm going to take the place of the computer 
that is in control of the relay because I don't want the engine to run. And this is going to be a known good capture, meaning there's absolutely nothing wrong with this vehicle. We're going to manipulate the relay. So I'm going to energize the relay now. And then I'm going to release it. And I'm going to energize the relay again. And then I'm going to release it. Again, this is the known good capture. And we will create a fault in the system and repeat the process. So we've introduced our fault to the AC compressor clutch control system. And we are going to attempt to energize the system again and capture the data. So again, I'm going to be manipulating the relay coil on the control side just as the PCM would be doing if the engine was running. And we're going to capture the data. So energize the relay. Release it. Energize the relay again. Release it. And we will save this data. Analyze it comfortably at our desk and compare the two waveforms to see if we can determine what the fault is. Okay, so we have the waveform of the known good capture up on the screen now. And there's a couple of neat aspects about this scope, this eScope Elite 4 from Automotive Test Solutions that I want to point out here. Um, first of all, uh, in the measure and deep record tab in which we harness this information, the scope will auto scale everything for you. So you don't have to take the time to set up individual channels on um, how much amplitude you want displayed. It does it automatically, which makes things very simple and convenient. Um, so we are referencing three channels. Again, yellow is our voltage supply from our battery. And it is nearly 12 volts with the key on. And remember, our engine is not running. We had the key on and I manipulated this relay ground control by, by I'll, I'll say by hand manually. I provided the ground path. In red is the voltage that leaves the relay once the relay is energized. So when the relay is energized, the voltage on the red channel matched the yellow channel, which is what we should expect. Of course, if voltage is there, it's, being, it's feeding current. If the circuit's intact, it's feeding current to the AC compressor con control clutch. And that's what we see here in green. But this, there's an aspect to this waveform that we need to take a look at that can really offer some insight into the functionality of the circuit. So I'm going to come over here and grab a zoom window. And we're going to zoom in on this area right here. Actually, first what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out a little bit to give me a little bit more real estate both above and below the waveform. Um, so again, I'll, I'll grab cursors quick. We've got about 12 volts there. 13.9 volts, give or take. And I'll put the other one down here. That's nearly ground. Just slightly below ground where I placed it. And here is where we're going to be zooming in at. So I'm going to get rid of these cursors for a minute. And we are going to zoom in on this area right here. So this area shows system voltage again, supply voltage, and when the relay is energized, voltage is on the output side of the relay. But the most important aspect to this waveform right now is the green trace. I'm going to I'm going to turn this off momentarily, both the yellow trace and the red trace, cuz I just want to show you the green trace which is amperage. Amperage is current flowing through the circuit. And this current ramp, what we call a ramp, peaks out at about 3 amps, which is typical of what I see from testing known good AC compressor clutch coils. They're all approximately 3 amps, give or take. Now I call it a ramp. If I zoom a little bit tighter, you can see it starts to ramp up. So, let's zoom again. Oops, wrong button. There we go. That's the one I want. We're showing that ramp. And this area right in here, this is known as a pintle bump. 
that pinnal bump provides some insight to us into the functionality of the circuit itself. So as current flows through the circuit, in this case approximately 3 amps, a magnetic field builds around the AC compressor clutch field coil. And that magnetic field will draw that clutch in to apply it. And the pinnal bump, what we see right there occurring, is physical shuttling. That occurs when physical shuttling of that AC compressor clutch actually occurs. Because when we move that ferrous metal clutch within that magnetic field, it creates a counter voltage. And that counter voltage momentarily drives current flow down. So again, what we see right here is proof that the compressor clutch actually shuttled. So going back to, let me turn these on again. Going back to our original capture, when we turn on voltage, when we turn on the relay, the voltage is applied to the AC compressor clutch coil. Current flows, creates a magnetic field and creates that pinnel bump that we see right there. So let's take a look at our known, this is our known good capture. This is what we should expect to see. Again, three amps approximately and a pinnel bump. Let's take a look at our faulted capture and make a comparison. So we've got our faulted capture up on the screen and you will see a lot of similarities. For one, the 12 volts being supplied from the battery is still approximately the same. The available voltage at the output side of the relay switch, the switch side of the relay, is approximately the same. And if I grab our cursors here, our current flow in green is once again about 3 amps, stating that the work being performed, the electrical work being performed in the circuit, is the same as the good one. That tells us a lot about the nature of this fault. It tells us we have nothing to worry about electrically because it mimics the good one. Three amps is the same electrical work being performed as the three amps in the good capture. So let's do this. Let's once again turn off the yellow trace and turn off the red trace. I'll move my cursor to get it out of the way and we're gonna zoom in on the current ramp. But what do we see differently in this current ramp? What's missing? Our pinnel bump. Again, our amplitude of our current ramp is the same, about 3 amps, meaning it should yield the same amount of magnetism as the healthy circuit. But without a pinnel bump, mechanical work was not being performed. So let's think about that for a moment. If the mechanical work was not being performed, but the electrical portion of the system is healthy, it only leads us to one truly possible conclusion that the, the clutch cannot shuttle for some reason. The most logical conclusion to draw just from this information alone is perhaps the air gap between the AC compressor clutch field coil or a pulley assembly and the clutch itself is too big meaning we have a strong enough magnetic field to overcome a normal air gap. But a large air gap, one that exceeds specifications, there may not be a strong enough magnetic field to overcome it. So that's what we would have to inspect for. So did I convince you? Looking at the work being performed along with the voltage, the command gives us true insight to the functionality of the circuit or lack thereof. Meaning, not only can we see if the circuit's functioning as designed, or if it's not functioning as designed, but we can also see where the fault lies. When we look at it from all three aspects, like we showed here, voltage from the ignition switch to the relay, voltage leaving the relay, assuming that the relay would close, that voltage would be there, and then current flow through the circuit, showing the work being performed by the AC compressor clutch. It's clear to see with the known good waveform that we had that ever so important pinnel bump proving mechanical operation. That indeed the AC compressor clutch 
functioned and cycled, physically moved or shuttled. However, when we created our fault, although the circuit was healthy, and we saw that by way of the amperage amplitude, the amplitude was the same, meaning the same current flow or the same work being performed in that electrical circuit was good versus bad, the exact same, proving there was nothing wrong with the circuit itself. But the lack of the pinnel bump proved that the AC compressor clutch did not cycle, meaning only one thing could be the problem. The air gap was too much. The air gap was too much, and the magnetism created from that work being performed couldn't cycle the AC compressor clutch because it couldn't overcome that gap. It's all in the power of the data. The data doesn't lie. If you take the time to understand what the data is trying to tell you and understand how components work together as a system at their most basic level, my friends, there's nothing we can't figure out. Thanks again for joining me on this episode of The Trainer. I'm Brandon Steckler, Technical Editor of Motor Age Magazine. We'll see you next time.